So you talked about diagnostics at scale as a possible solution to uh, future pandemics. Uh, what about another possible solution, which is uh, kind of creating a backup copy? You know, I'm actually now um, uh, putting together an ask for a backup for myself for the first time, taking backup of data seriously. Mm. But if we were to take the uh, the backup of human consciousness seriously and uh, try to expand throughout the uh, solar system and colonize other planets, do you think that's an interesting uh, solution, one of many, uh, for uh, protecting human civilizations from self-destruction, sort of humans becoming a multi-planetary species? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I find it electrifying, first of all. So I've got a little bit of a personal bias. When I was a kid, I thought there was nothing cooler than rockets. I thought there was <laughs> nothing cooler than NASA. I thought there was nothing cooler than people walking on the moon. And as I grew up, um, I thought there was nothing more tragic than the fact that we went from walking on the moon to at best getting to something like suborbital altitude. And just, I found that more and more depressing with the passage of decades at just the colossal expense of, you know, manned space travel and the fact that it seemed that we were unlikely to ever get back to the moon, let alone Mars. So I have a boundless appreciation for Elon Musk for many reasons, but the fact that he has put Mars on the incredible agenda is one of the things that I appreciate immensely. So there's just this sort of space nerd in me that just says, God, that's cool. But on a more practical level, we were talking about, you know, uh, potentially inhabiting planets that aren't our own. And we're thinking about a benign civilization that would do that in, in planetary circumstances where we're not causing other conscious systems to suffer. I mean, Mars is a place that's very promising. There may be microbial life there, and I hope there is. And if we found it, I think it would be electrifying. But I think ultimately, the moral judgment would be made that you know the continued thriving of that microbial life is of less concern than creating a habitable planet to humans, which would be a project on the many thousands of years scale. But I don't think that that would be a greatly immoral act. And if that happened, and if Mars became you know, home to a self-sustaining group of humans that could survive a catastrophic mistake here on Earth, then yeah, the fact that we have a backup colony is great. And if we could make more, I'm sorry, not backup colony, backup copy is great. And if we could make more and more such backup co copies throughout the solar system by hollowing out asteroids and whatever else it is, yeah. maybe even Venus, we could get rid of three quarters of its atmosphere and, you know, turn it into a tropical paradise. Um, I think all of that is wonderful. Now, whether we can make the leap from that to interstellar trans transportation with the incredible distances that are involved, um, I think that's an open question. But I think if we ever do that, it would be more like the Pacific Ocean's uh, channel of human expansion than the Atlantic Oceans. And so what I mean by that is uh, when we think about European society transmitting itself across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. It's these big, ambitious, crazy, expensive, one-shot expeditions like Columbus's mm -hmm. to make it across this enormous expanse, and at least initially, without all, any certainty that there's land on the other end, right? So that's kind of how I view our space program, is like mm -hmm. big, you know, very conscious, deliberate e efforts to get from point A to point B. If you look at how Pacific Islanders um, transmitted, you know, their descendants and their culture and so forth throughout Polynesia and beyond. It was much more, you know, inhabiting a place, getting to the point where there were people who were ambitious or unwelcome enough to decide it's time to go off island and find the next one and pray to find the next one. Mm -hmm. That method of transmission didn't happen in a single swift year, but it happened over many, many centuries. And it was like going from this island to that island, and probably for every expedition that went out to seek another island and actually lucked out and found one, God knows how many were lost at sea. But that form of transmission took place over a very long period of time. And I could see us, you know, perhaps, you know, going from the inner solar system to the outer solar system to the Kuiper belt to the Oort cloud. You know, there's there's theories that there might be, you know, planets out there that are not anchored to stars, like kind of hop hop slowly transmitting mm -hmm. ourselves to so at some point we're actually in alpha centauri but i think that kind of backup copy and transmission of our physical presence and our culture to a diversity of you know extraterrestrial 
um, outposts is a really exciting idea. I really never thought about that because I I have thought, my thinking about space exploration has been very Atlantic Ocean centric in the sense that there would be one program with NASA and maybe private uh, Elon Musk, SpaceX or Jeff Bezos and so on. But it's true that with the help of Elon Musk making it cheaper and cheaper and more effective to create these technologies where you could uh, go into deep space, perhaps the way we actually colonize the solar system and uh, and expand out into the galaxy is basically just like these like renegade ships of of uh, weirdos. <laughs> it's just kind of like like home like most of them like quote unquote homemade, uh, but they just kind of venture out into space and just like like you know the android the initial android model of like millions of like these little ships just flying out. Most of them die off uh, in horrible accidents, but some of them will will persist or there'll be stories of them persisting and over a period of decades and centuries there'll be other attempts almost always as a response to the main set of efforts that's interesting yeah because you kind of think of mars colonization as the big nasa elon musk effort of a big colony but maybe the successful one would be you know like a decade after that there'll be like a ship from like some kid, some high school kid who gets together a large team and does something probably illegal and launches something where they end up actually persisting quite a bit. And from that learning lessons that uh, nobody ever gave permission for, but somehow actually flourish. And and then take that into the scale of uh, centuries forward mm -hmm. into the into the rest of space. That's really interesting. Yeah, I think I think the giant steps are likely to be NASA-like efforts. Like right. there, there is no intermediate rock. Well, I guess it's the moon, but even getting to the moon ain't that easy between us and Mars, right? So like the giant set steps, the the big hubs, like the O'Hare airports yeah. of the future probably will be very deliberate efforts. But then, you know, you would have, I think that kind of diffusion mm -hmm. as space travel becomes more democratized and more capable, you'll have this sort of natural diffusion of people who kind of want to be off grid or think they can make a fortune there, you know, the kind of mentality that drove people to San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco was not populated as a result of a, a King Ferdinand and Isabella-like effort to fund Columbus going over. It was just a whole bunch of people making individual s decisions that there's gold in them Thar Hills and I'm going to go out and get a piece of it. So I could see that kind of fusion. What I can't see, and the reason that I think this Pacific model of transmission is more likely, is I just can't see a NASA-like effort to go from Earth to Alpha Centauri. Oh. It's just too far. I just see lots and lots and lots of relatively tiny steps between now and there. And the fact is that there is there are large chunks of matter going at least a light year beyond the sun. I mean, the Oort cloud, I think, extends at least a light year beyond the sun. And you know, then maybe there are these untethered planets after that. We won't really know till we get there. And if our Oort cloud goes out a light year and Alpha Centauri's Oort cloud goes out a light year, you've already cut in half the distance. Mm -hmm. You know, so who knows? But yeah. One of the possibilities, probably the cheapest and most effective way to create interesting interstellar spacecraft is uh, ones that are powered and driven by AI. Mm. And you could think of, here's where you have high school students be able to build a sort of a HAL 9000 version uh, the, the modern version of that. And it's kind of interesting to think about <laughs> these uh, robots traveling out throughout, perhaps, perhaps sadly, long after human civilization is gone, mm. there'll be these intelligent robots flying throughout space and perhaps land on uh, off of Centauri B or any of those kinds of planets and, uh, and colonize sort of, <sighs> Humanity continues through the proliferation of our creations, like uh, like robotic creations that have some echoes of mm -hmm. that uh, intelligence. Hopefully, also the consciousness. 